where live... Okay, so when you do the observer, go to this... You know, some people, when the observer, can get all kinds of strange feelings coming up. When you first practice being in the detached observer, you may get numbness, sadness, um, grief, anger, all of these feelings, because you're going to... So the ego gets uh, payoff out of various things, you know, gets its excitement from the world, from, you know, uh, as was, you know, dualities. You could say dualities, you know, like this is good and this is bad. Oh, you know, there's cake, that's good. There's no cake, that's bad. Or there's money, that's good. There's no money, that's bad. So when you go to the detached observer, go to the observer of your thoughts and, and go to the observer of feelings, still feelings may come up. And that's a, that's a good thing because if the numbness comes up or any other feeling comes up, it's because the ego is being deprived of its toys. You know, it's being deprived of its toys so it'll get, you know, one can go into a state of numbness or frozenness or anger or grief. And, uh, and it's like, the ego wants the excitement of the drama of either good or bad, or high or low, or analyzing the world, or having a label, commentary, even just to be able to have commentary on the world. So when that happens, just by going to the observer of it, either go to the observer of it, or just let it be there and, and, and witness it, and try not to engage in any kind of uh, giving, energizing the thoughts to make a further story. Like, whatever comes up is fine. If numbness comes up, if anger comes up, it's fine. Um, just try, and that's, that's to be natural, because unconsciously, the ego is like, it's a bit like a computer that's getting so many payoffs out of analyzing the world, having things that are, are good and bad in the world. Uh, even the job of labeling and making commentary on the world, that all these feelings uh, are likely to come up, and you just let them be, and they dissolve. The numbness as well, you let it be there, and you let it dissolve um, until, until they all evaporate. It comes in, because really, the, um, what we're doing is, the ego, the, the main thing of the ego is to try and get, uh, is try to extract uh, its life from being in control in the world. So, as you're going to the observer, you're starting to get that happiness from the inside, from being in the, in the observer. So there's less and less. So each time you get, you're getting it from the inside, you know, you, you have to go through like a mini, with, a mini grief process as you're letting go of the various attachments that the ego's had payoff for, for its existence. Like the ego says, you need fear to be vigilant in the world, or you need to be able to think, to be able to analyze the world. You need to be able to register what's good and bad in the world. So, and all, you know, all of these things. So there is, and, and it will, it defends itself. You know, it's like it'll say, like, a common one of spiritual seekers is boredom. You know, they'll let go of things, they'll go through a phase of boredom, or they may go through a phase of grief. Um, if you're an addict, you know, you can get grief. You know, if you're used to uh, donuts, and you're, you're letting go of donuts, and then uh, as you're going to the detached observer, suddenly, like, you know, sadness may come, you know, and that's normal, or frozenness, so these various feelings arise, and you just let them burn off without labeling them, and then eventually, as they burn off, you get that, you get, uh, you get, you get the happiness from being in the eternal now, of being in the observer. That is, in fact, the complete death of the ego, that means you don't need to think to be happy. You don't need to be fearful to be happy. You don't need to anticipate the future to be happy. Um, you know, you don't, need, you don't need anything to be happy. Which is the thing, you see. To be, to be happy without, uh, without needing to be in control or to manipulate something or get something or to think about something is just always present. Eternal happiness is always present. So. It's to be expected when you're practicing the attached observer that lots of things, and you, basically like Buddha said, you know, we have to let, you know, to get off the, the wheel of old age suffering and death, you have to let go of every single attachment, every single attachment, attachment to the body, attachment to thinking, attachment to the future, attachment to being in control, 
attachment to uh, getting excitement from external things, all of these attachments. I was, attach I was attached to getting a high from sugar. I was attached to getting a high, f you know, from a relationship or a, a getting a high from that or attached to being clever or attached to having, uh, attached to my thinking. Also, there's more subtle ones, the attachment um, to the, the story of me. That's actually a big attachment. You know, like the, the, let me tell you my life story, because it's so, you know, it's, it's the most exciting story to me, you see. That's why it's so, so exciting. So you want to let go, but your story doesn't mean anything. Or your life, so those, um, so you're letting go of a lot of layers of stuff and, and just let the Hello? various layers go. Oh. Or you just go to the observer of them. Either do you feel the feelings or go to the observer of them and let them dissolve. Some of them may last for periods of time, uh, but that's okay as well. You just go to the observer of that. Even you can go to the observer of time, you see. Also, you can go to the observer of that aspect that wants it to be gone quickly. Oh, I, I've been feeling frozen for three days. You know, something is like going on in the background, like I want it gone now. So let that thought go and just let it be there and just be in the observing of that. And that's, you know, spiritual work is like a paradox. You know, it's like the fastest way to let go is to let go. You know, uh, so this is a paradox. So it's like if you're wanting to do spiritual work quickly and get it over and done quickly, you, it ends up being slower. You know, so if you let go, if you surrender, like let's say, uh, let's say, um, let's say, uh, what is it, numbness comes up, you're doing spiritual work, you're letting go of the attraction to thoughts, because you, you're, you're letting go of attractions and aversions. Certain things the ego is attracted to getting um, a positive hit from, and the ego has aversions, like it doesn't want certain things to happen. So as you let go of uh, letting go of the attraction and versions, you'll get sort of uh, feelings or thoughts uh, arising. So you're just going to observe it and you just let things, sometimes when things are taking a long time, you just surrender and just be in the observer. And then that's the fastest way. Because if you, if you let something in your consciousness want it to go quickly, then actually that's a resistance. And so it'll take even longer for it to, to process through.